In this video, we will demonstrate how to build REST services to perform the CRUD or create, retrieve, update and delete operations using Spring Boot with MongoDB database at the backend. I have MongoDB installed locally on my machine. Here I have Spring Tool Suite running which is a flavor of Eclipse. Let's create a new project by clicking File, New, Other, Spring Boot, Spring Starter Project and call it Demo MongoDB. Click Next. Let us choose from the NoSQL node MongoDB and from the web node Web. Click Finish. Looking at the POM file for this project, it consists of the Spring Boot Starter Data MongoDB and Spring Boot Starter Web, the dependencies we had included while creating this project. To specify the MongoDB database to connect to, go to the application.properties file under source main resources. The general format of specifying it is using spring.data.mongodb.uri and then in the URL mongodb colon double slash specify the username, password, at sign, host colon port slash the database name. Specifying username, password and database name is optional. By default, Spring Boot will connect to the Mongo database running at local host port 27017 and database name it uses is test. So if this is the connection property for you, you may not specify anything in the properties file, leave it blank and Spring Boot will automatically connect at port 27017 at the MongoDB database running at local host. If the database name specified does not exist, it will create it for you. Let's now create a new package for our model and append model to the base package. Let's create our model which is the person class by right clicking on the model package and choosing new class and calling it person. Click finish. Now first let us annotate it as a document. The document annotation identifies a domain object to be persisted to MongoDB database. Import it. Now let us put the ID annotation which is the identifier for every Mongo document. Let it be of type string. Next, let us create the attribute of the person class string first name, string last name and int age. Let us create a constructor which takes in these and assigns it to the class variables. Next, let us generate the getters and setters by right clicking, going to source and selecting generate getters and setters. Let's check the variables. Lastly, let us override the toString method to pass a friendly string printing the attributes of the person class. Next, let us create the repository package. So right click on the base package and append repository to it. Click finish. Next, let us right click on the package and choose new interface. Call it person repository and click finish. Let us denote this as a repository with the annotation. Let's import it. Now let's extend the repository with the Mongo repository passing in the class person and its identifier type which is string. That is all and Spring Boot will generate all the basic CRUD operations for the person class against the MongoDB database. Of course, we can add our own additional methods following a standard naming convention. So public person find by and then the attribute with making the first letter in uppercase first name passing in string first name. Another method returning a list of person objects with find by age passing in int age. Let's fix the import save the class. Next let us create the service package and class. So right click on the base package choose new package and append service to it. Now right click on the package, choose new, class, call it person service. Click finish. Let us annotate it with the spring service annotation. Here we will first create a private variable to hold the reference to our repository which we will auto wire. Let's fix the imports. Let us implement the CRUD service methods which the controller will call. First let's implement the create method. This method will return the newly created person object 
and takes in the first name, last name and age. Using these, it creates the person object and then calls the person repository dot save method, which was automatically implemented for us with the repository interface, passing in the person object. This repository method will save it to the MongoDB database. Next, let's create the retrieve methods. First, a method get all to get all the person objects. So a list of person objects calling in the person repository the find all method. As you can see, the Mongo repository interface generates a lot of finder methods for us like the find all, find by id, etc. with zero coding on our part for these. Next, let us create a method to return a specific person passing in the first name which is say unique in our system and will always return one record. Inside, it will call person repository dot find by first name method which we created a declaration of earlier. The interface implements it. Pretty easy. Now, let us implement the update method which will return the person object and takes in the first name, last name and age. First, using the first name parameter, it calls the person repository dot find by first name method to find the person object. Then, it updates the last name and age and again, using person repository dot save updates and persists it to the Mongo repository and returns the person object returned by this operation. Finally, let us create the delete methods. The first one is to delete all records, which will simply call the person repository dot delete all method. And finally, to delete a specific person with a given first name. So let us copy this code to get the person object based on the first name and then call the person repository dot delete method passing in the person object. That is it. Now, let us create the controller package and class. So right click on the base package, choose new package, call it controller, click finish. Now, let us create the controller person controller. Let us mark this class with the rest controller annotation to indicate it such. Fix the import. First, let us create a private instance of the person service class or to wire it, fix the imports. Next, let us create the request mapping for the create rest service. The method returns a string. Using the add request parameter, we pass the first name, last name and age parameters. Fix the import. Inside, we create the new person object by calling the person service dot create method, passing in these parameters. Next, we return the string passed back to us by calling the person p dot to string method. Next, we create a request mapping for get. The method will return the person object taking in the request parameter of first name. Inside, it returns the person object returned by the person service dot get by first name method passing in the parameter for first name. Next, let us create a request mapping to get all objects. The method will return a list of person objects and inside, it simply returns the list from the call to person service dot get all method. Next, let us create a request mapping for the update. This method returns a string and takes in all the attributes of the person object. Inside, it gets the person object updated by calling the person service dot update method, passing in the parameters and then returning the p dot to string representation. Next, let us create a request mapping for delete. The method takes in the first name and then inside calls the person service dot delete method passing in the first name. Then it returns the string, deleted and the first name. Finally, let us create the request mapping for the delete all method, which will call the person service dot delete all method and then return deleted all records. Let us make a change to refactor the package for controller and put it under the base package of com.example.demo so that it can be scanned and discovered by Spring. Let us now start our app by right clicking and choosing run as Spring Boot app. It is deployed on Tomcat running on port 8080. Let us now go to the browser and paste this URL which calls the create method passing in parameters first name as Jack, last name as Owen and age as 25. We get back the person created. Next, let us call the method again putting in the first name as Tom. The second object is created. Let us now call the get all endpoint and we see our two person objects here. Next, 
Let us call the get endpoint passing in the first name as Tom to get just that object. Let's call the update endpoint for first name Tom, changing the last name to Sparrow and age as 30. It is done. Going back to our get rest endpoint and refreshing it, we see the change. Let us call the delete endpoint to delete the record for first name Tom. It is deleted. Refreshing the rest endpoint for Tom gives us back nothing. Calling the get all rest point now just gives us the one record. Let us now call the delete all endpoint and all records are deleted. Refreshing the get all rest endpoint, we see no records. To summarize, in this video we saw how to create a Spring Boot app with MongoDB repository interface. We implemented the CRUD methods and demonstrated them with creating rest endpoints for these. Thanks for watching.